let's get straight into things and at the top start with your growth forecast for this year it's sitting at 7.4% for 2012 7 and a half percent for 2013 run us through some of the support factors you see uh, that are currently at play for the Nigerian economy well, probably among the support factors, the first one you should mention is the robustness of the non-oil economy and the healthy state of consumption, private consumption. Now, there's some, an there's some anecdotal evidence of a slight softening of consumption first quarter coming from one or two of the big multinational producers of consumer goods. But uh, our view is this is short-lived and the, the non-oil economy is uh, powering ahead. Uh, this can be seen across traditional sectors and newer sectors. Traditional sectors, i.e. agriculture, uh, uh, con some construction, newer sectors, telecoms, and IT-related services. The economy, I mean, it's, it's probably worth saying that the economy in the fourth quarter last year, according to the Statistics Bureau, was the third fastest growing anywhere. Uh, that, of course, is among the countries which had that time reported their fourth quarter figures. So in, in, on the growth scene, our view is, yes, it's a bright picture. Of course, there's some clouds in the sky. There are always clouds in the sky. Yeah. Uh, insecurity, dependence on the oil price. But overall, a bright picture is our view. Of course, a lot of that bright picture will be dependent on the kind of reforms that we're seeing place, where uh, we're seeing taking place in the territory. I mean, we've seen successful reform uh, underway within the banking sector, and that seems to be picking up nicely. But uh, when it comes to things like the petroleum industry bill, uh, still very much things up in the air at this stage of the game. So what's your assessment of that situation? Well, yes, reform, certainly. There, there is a reform momentum, and this is why we had in our title of our report, uh, Quick Wins. The first test, of course, came with the first attempt, at, well, latest attempt, deregulating fuel price in January. So partial success. They didn't deregulate, but they uh, cut, cut the subsidy, i.e. pushed up the retail price. So uh, we hope very much that they'll complete the mission uh, as soon as practical. Uh, on, the other, on the other reforms you mentioned, yes, you mentioned the PIB, the industry bill, petroleum. Well, yes, I mean, this is um, meant to be resubmitted in a new version to the Assembly, and at which point uh, the, the government hope it will be passed quickly. Um, you know, to be honest, this has been one of the slowest moving pieces of legislation in record, more than three years since it was first submitted, and constantly being hijacked by vested interests, you know, either on the foil, foreign oil major side or even on the state oil corporation side. Yeah. So, you know, we're expecting to be passed, but um, I fear there'll be some compromises and it won't quite be the document that we promised about two years ago, you know, surrender of acreage, unused acreage, um, a certain amount of funds set aside for the communities in the Delta. Some of these elements uh, will not be there, but we're hopeful it will be passed this year. The trust seems to be a very big issue, though, and uh, therein comes into the spotlight, uh, you know, the low credibility of just how government is going to be using the kind of savings that are re reaped and the funds that are reaped, uh, Gregory. So in terms of credibility, uh, you know, where, what status does the Nigerian government hold in, in your books? Well, its credibility among economists um, <laughs> is quite high. But what matters, of course, is its credibility among the population. Now, the credibility of um, several Nigerian governments going back many years has been low, which has been acknowledged by the current government when they had a town hall exercise in Lagos trying to persuade why they wanted deregulation. So the arguments, the arguments are strong. I don't see there's, a, there's no compelling argument to retain the subsidy. But uh, the government lacks credibility. How you build credibility is by showing you can perform. And showing you perform means that uh, you do allocate some of these savings to low-income areas. And it also means that you, that you deliver on power, yeah. which is uh, another key plank of the reform program. And that you've got the right uh, people sitting at the helm of it all. It seems that uh, you know the new finance minister Ngozi Okonja Awiela in the driving seat uh, at uh, you know at this position has really uh, brought uh, some level of credibility with her as well. Well, uh, I, I think she has, and uh, long may she continue in her post. Uh, obviously, we all know what's going on at the World Bank. Absolutely. And you know what. And where, you know, were it down to a, a genuine meritocratic contest, who is the obvious candidate? She's the obvious candidate. Uh, but, you know, 
political factors come into it and people have votes. So, you know, despite being the strongest candidate, um, I doubt she's going to win the contest and therefore we hope she'll continue um, with her reform program in Nigeria. Of course, as you've highlighted, it's that uh, non-oil economy that really stands in the spotlight, uh, Gregory. Uh, just looking at it and, you know, the kind of reliance that's placed on the consumption side of things, how much at risk does it stand at right now, especially where you're looking at interest rates having peaked at 12% uh, so far? I mean, is that the peak that we're looking at uh, right now where you've got uh, fuel subsidies threatening an inflation scenario uh, possibly spiraling out of control? Uh, I'm not overly worried on, on that score. Uh, yes, of course, you put up, as you say, you put up the retail price of fuel and um, there's some impact in the inflation numbers. Uh, but you had the, the February data, which surprised virtually everybody by showing a slowdown in the headline rate uh, year on year, uh, which suggests that maybe the, the second round effects uh, weren't quite as potent as many, including the Central Bank and the Monetary Policy Committee, had, uh, had expected. I mean, our, our, our take is that we'll be, we'll be probably something like 11% at the end of the year, December, and next year into, into a single, single digit, which of course was the objective of uh, CBN, but deferred for obvious reasons. So overall, what's your view on Nigeria standing as an investment case right now and the potential it holds for attracting FDI its way? Well, I think it, uh, the, the case, is, case is rather strong. Uh, growing population, very large market, um, entrepreneurial uh, population by any criteria. Uh, you know, some, foreign, some uh, possibility of investing in infrastructure, huge possibilities there, serving consumer market, maybe even uh, some uh, intermediate goods in manufacturing. But agriculture, huge possibilities there. But in terms of FDI, the yeah, I mean, w no, we have to mention the insecurity yeah. because your, your new investor is obviously seeing the headlines and um, has some concerns on that score. But at least uh, some evolution taking place, uh, certainly when it comes to perceptions of Nigeria and the investment case it puts on the table. Gregory, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Gregory Cronston is a macro and fixed income researcher over at FBN Capital.